Competitive Edge for League of Legends is back for another week with myself, Monte Cristo, and Thorin. Uh, we do have our Match of the Week promotion rolling again, guys. So be sure, if you would like to enter the raffle for up to $20 USDT, please in the comments below, comment with your esports bet username. You can also sign up if you want, uh, if you haven't signed up with our account yet, with your own account rather, you can use our referral code also below, sign up with an account. That will enter you into the raffle to win $20 USDT. Or you can bet $10 or more on our match of the week. And if you win, you'll get double that for $40 USDT. So many ways to enter comments on the video, sign up using our referral link, or place a wager of $10 or more on our match of the week, which will be KT Rolster versus D plus Kia. And we'll be talking about that a little bit later in the show. Uh, but first off, Thorin, we have to discuss the suffering. immense di the the suffering by any chance. <laughs> it's the suffering of KT. That was <laughs> that. KT oh, I mean, there's both. I mean, we've got. I mean, in a minute, we're going to do the KDF one too, right? Which, made, which every team with its K is just. It's only us, they reckon. It's not, no one else in the world. They can't win a game nowadays. A KO, as it were. Uh, let's take a look yes. at last week. Now, we were hugely up last week. Last week was very good. We're down about two thousand in total this week. So the predictions we made were NIP over LNG. Got good odds on that one. LNG has turned entirely into a pumpkin, so I don't know if you'll get too great odds from betting against LNG anymore. Uh, we took the the upset of JDG versus Billy Billy, which Thorin, they what had happened? it in the bag, dude. Yeah, JDG happened? had it in the fucking bag, and they they just fumbled it at the very end on their like almost final push. If they had just waited for the next Baron with ruler so fed, I cannot believe BLG won that series. It was criminal that they won that final game. I was no, I'm super you, depressed. Yeah. Yeah, the thing was a bag of game, though. It's just it was. obviously we were, we it was were that incredibly fun. It was an incredibly win. fun yeah, game. Don't get me wrong. That third one was really good, sure. and you guys should absolutely watch it if you haven't yet. But it is disappointing when we were looking at the very end of that to get 2.4 odds, and it's, it was so extremely close to hitting, and then it just didn't. Um, By the way, that's even the angle I always say is actually, I think, fundamentally the main reason why gambling is a, an enjoyable pastime for people. <laughs> it's to give what you call like an extra sweat. Oh, like yeah. in this particular scenario, like if I'm watching that game normally, I just won't be able to win because I think they're the best team. But actually in this analogy, it gives me a reason why I have like an extra <laughs> tension and it would be cool if the other result happens. So that's why you put a reasonable amount on it. You just enjoy it. You don't have, you don't have, you don't yeah. have to go too much so you're getting upset. And you don't put too little so it means nothing. <laughs> you put a little bit of picante, a little bit of pepper onto the meal to give a bit of spice oh, yeah, that's what you're doing and then we have the definitely great... that much spice. Uh, oh, and then absolutely. sadly then, then, then even though I was not planning on watching those games I did also see then OK Brion who can't win against anyone <laughs> just can only win against teams we pick who are actually good and that doesn't none of those results seem make sense that's like some Twilight Zone things to wreck us on our bet isn't it like in that mental they'll yeah. like never win another game this split mate I can't handle it we, we did actually we put both. the yeah, well, we put a parlay on, so we only had to lose one of them, no, but they did lose we've one. Done anyway. <laughs> yeah, but that's like to add insult to iniquity. Like, we also <laughs> lost both of them as well. <laughs> they should uh, have won either, but whatever. It's all and, good. And shout out to KT. And also shout out to Hanwa, by the way, for, for the first time this split, deciding to put uh, Zeka on champions he could play, right, yep. of course, as they're facing KT Rolster. And KT completely exposed as a fraud. Pioshik turned back into a pumpkin. Now, yep. did we think it was going to happen this soon? No, but he was particularly bad in the series versus Hanwa life. So they lost that one. And then Thorin, I thought, the telecom war is always close. What if we put oh. a little bit of a 250 flyer yeah. on KT winning, and then we put 500 on them just winning one game? Just one, just one game. Oh, just need. T1 minus 1.5. It's always 2-1. It's, it's, it's always 2-1 every split. So it was safe on that one, right? Can't possibly get that one wrong. Uh, because we would have covered our loss uh, and made money uh, on the flyer if we had just hit on that on the the T T one minus one point five. But guess what, Thorne? Of course we can't have nice things, so KT gets two owed. They get two owed in both series. We lose all the money we had on KT. Uh, and we see the upsets from Brian over Kwangdung. Although if there was a human being out there, Thorin, who put the parlay on the Brian side for winning both matches over Kwang Dung, oh, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <You're> mental. <laughs> that would have been crazy. So uh 
good week last week. Not so so great of a week this week. We'll be uh, we'll be trying to bounce back again. Uh, we do only have Asian matches up for you guys this week. Uh, obviously, LCK and LPL are running, but LCS going to be on hiatus until this weekend. Um, Oh, I guess we can we can actually pick some LCS matches, but we'll we'll stick with the Asian ones for now because I think a lot of the Asian matches are good. Uh, and then LEC is going to be on the break until the weekend of the 9th and 10th uh, when they start the best of one cycle for the spring split. Um, so right now we we've picked some interesting games, a couple of FPX games because Fun Plus Phoenix is looking a lot better than expected. Oh, hey, I yeah, yeah. Uh, thinking that, you know, if you've watched some of their games, like they've had some really compelling gameplay so far. They just actually beat Top Esports last night and they have a very hard week. So they have to play. They just played Top. They're going to play FBX or they're going to play NIP and then they're going to play Weibo. Um, but if you believe in Milky Way and the things that this team is doing around carry junglers right now, I think there is potentially some outside value for FPX, particularly if we deploy the same kind of strategy that we did with KT last week, which is like, do I think they're going to beat NIP? Probably not. But at 3.7 odds, NIP has had a very soft schedule so far, and FPX is far more legit. What have you thought about uh, you know, FPX's performance? I mean, the whole thing is, this is like one of the splits where you look at the lineup and you're like, ah, you know what? Maybe I could be out on FPX. If you remember, obviously, back in the day, they were a byproduct of Doinby, which has been gone for ages and ages now, guys. Sure. And then you look at the team, it's like, who do they have? They have Diok Dam, they have Life. <laughs> like, these aren't even top players in the LCK if people have been watching the last few years. So you look at the squad and you're like, ah, oh, maybe this is actually the split I'm out. But the key thing, like you say, is the Milky Way jungler is actually cracked. Like, it's really, really good. Like, it's what this is one of the reasons why, if people don't know, people like, bought in LEC got so hyped and still are to this day because you just get these mega talents come through in the LPL and the craziest thing is like you know in Korea at least you'll hear those things of like oh they were thinking about getting this guy as like a sub for a team one or something you'll always hear like a story that like it like, gives like a reason as to why someone could be cracked out I had no warning whatsoever I never heard anyone talking about this guy and he's actually just unbelievable so like he actually has won a bunch of games by himself so I really do think actually yeah if, if you're going to pick one team to have upset potential why not and if you're going to pick them against someone one and IP they basically initially were so high up because of the strength of schedule like you say they got some easy yeah. weeks and actually they didn't have to look that great they're sort of getting quite good now like the last couple of games I saw they were starting to get together people like Rookie and Shanji etc getting the game going together it's like it's actually starting to become like a quality team maybe right. they can be a better squad but I think certainly they're right there potentially because like you say look at the odds we're not saying it has to be super likely 3.7 is bonkers like we only have to be right like less than 1.1 1. <laughs> 1 in 3.5 times or something so I think yes is worth a a little flyer. That yeah, it, it really plausible. is just the odds that are compelling. So I want to do a flyer on this one. And I also want to put a, a handicap on it like we did with KT, where I think FBX can win a game here. Like I think it's definitely yeah, possible good. that they win a game. So we'll put a little bit of a larger uh, prediction on that one. So uh, we'll take FBX outright at like 250. Um, and then, uh, which would be a huge return, obviously. And then we'll take uh, at NIP minus one point five. We will go ahead and uh, and take FPX here. Um, so I do think that this this definitely offers some more compelling play because I think FPX is good enough to at least take a game here, uh, and that covers our return. So we tried this last week with KT. And it didn't work. We're gonna do it a couple more times this week, and I think probably one of these is going to is going to pay off for us. Uh, back over to LCK Nongshim versus DRX. Now I'm still quite high on Nongshim because I think they're better than their record shows, and they've actually shown some decent improvement. I've been singing the praises of Sylvie as a jungler. I think Call Me has also had some decent games. Their bot lane looks looks like they're improving. So I think Nongshim is like actually deceptively good and so i think they're a lot of the favorite here yeah they're they're a lot better than drx um i mean so, i am actually shocked how bad the drx team is like i understand they're going it's clearly like a rebuild if people don't know they basically just brought their academy like challenger players yeah. up and brought them in but like they're they're really bad like this team's yes. not very good at all <laughs> yeah and, and i think Nongshim at least has shown some glimmers so We'll put a thousand here onto the Nongshim win. That feels pretty good. So just outright a thousand onto Nongshim. 
Uh, now we're going to get into this one. I love your thoughts on this because this seems insane to me. IG is at 4.7 to top esports at 1.1. How could you not take this flyer? IG has had a soft schedule, but they also beat BLG, and Leon has been a pretty big upgrade in the jungle. For those of you guys who don't know, um, they brought Leon in um, and immediately deployed him. He won their first series against BLG. They haven't been exactly the cleanest team, and I don't think this is going to be you know, a top four team in in um, in LPL, but we're also dealing with a top esports that, again, lost to FPX in a very embarrassing manner just yesterday where they kind of threw at the end of the game and were doing Baron while FPX just ended the game at around 28 minutes. So for me, I look at this these IG odds and I'm like, surely, like, we take the, we take the flyer here. Yeah, I mean, just uh, not least because, as you say, the form record is you sometimes get these crazy upsets. It even was literally IG that did it. And also, like, because uh, I actually, I've always had a theory about the LPL that there must be a factor comparable to when you do the Super Weeks of the West, where it's like there's no way you can give not only 100% like preparation, but you can't give 100% care and attention to a lower match sure, down yeah. when you play that many matches. Like, eventually there's going to be the lapse of judgment. So, yeah, why not? Like, the odds are bonkers for this one. We're only going for a little flyer anyway. We're not going to put, like, massive obviously so what what kind of amount would you put for that I, i'm just gonna put 250 so like a quarter unit on this one unfortunately the odds for top esports at minus 1.5 for ig are only at two so you know i'm not sure that one is worth it because i do think there's a world where this is just 2-0 and ip like game, yeah. um I, I guess i'm less confident in their current form than i am of like fpx um oh, they could get two zero sure yeah, so I, I'm just going to put the little bit of a flyer here, which is obviously a huge return, 1,100, almost 1,200 if we hit. But beyond that, uh, I'm not going to – I'm going to play it pretty conservatively. Now, the next two, including our match of the week, KT versus D+, but we'll start with a different LCK match. This one – these next two can – I don't know which way I, I'm leaning on these yet – because we have Kwangdong at 1.4, the same Kwangdong that just lost two best of threes to Breon, but I still think is a legit team. And then we have Nongshim, whose praises I just sung at 2.5. And the thing is, I'm scared about Kwangdong considering those performances, but I also would really love yeah, better, better odds for Nongshim. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the problem, though, is like, would, do you actually dare do the Nongshim underdog bet, though? Because... Like the Kwangdong freaks numbers are just good enough to justify it if you actually do think they're the true favorites. Or I don't know, it's a tough one. Because the, here's the problem I do like to do big underdog bets, but I also I get sick of losing a lot. So I like to win every now and then. <laughs> oh, I mean, he wants to say you just forget about that Breon week and then now Kwangdong bounces back. Uh, all think? right. We'll we'll take we'll I don't take want to it. believe in them. Come on. Like I actually <laughs> think that was almost Kwangdong. inexplicable how bad they were that week. I, I, like, I, I, that, that was really, really out of nowhere for me. Yeah, um, it was really surprising. Now, part of that was just, I think, a very bad composition in game three versus Smolder, and they seemed really unprepared for Breon. And also, Breon oh. has been tweaking their roster. Like, they've been switching players in and out, and Envy did look better. Um, so I, I I think maybe they were caught a little bit underprepared or unawared, unawares, and I think some of the drafting was not super Good for That's them. That's what you do, Monty. Here's how you rationalize that we're going to make this. We <laughs> needed Breon to actually beat them, to ah. make their odds go up to 1.4 instead. Ah. Otherwise, if, like, this was a, if we'd have won those two games and they were all the way up in the table, then they'd have like 1.1 1 .1 odds or something. All right. So this is actually, we create, our loss, Butterfly <laughs> Effect, created the chance for us to win on Guangdong as a favorite now. So now we do the bet. That's also, perhaps the CV Max belt has come out at this point in time over a few days off. They've retooled a little bit. All right, we'll we'll go we'll go relatively aggressive on this one because the only way to get kind of a good return is to put a higher yeah. higher amount. So 1000 on the Kwangdong. Surely they won't lose yet again. Um the nightmare scenario. Um All right, KT versus D+. In spite of the fact Thorin that KT burned us yet again, Surely the they are. Good though, surely, the, yeah. surely they are them. better than D plus. Like you you're to, with me you on this to. one, right? Because oh, D plus has looked kind of disastrous in their bot lane. Um, Showmaker can carry games, but I I think KT is just fundamentally a better team. 
I think people just got too hyped early on because obviously people were like, oh my goodness, the Lucid guy actually has game. Like, wow, maybe this was a genius pickup, but it doesn't change the fact that the rest of the roster isn't that straight fire. Like, you have to sort of like cope a little bit when you look at this team to figure out how it's going to be a top team. So no, it isn't. Like, this team looks absolutely stuck. Like, I don't think there's any way. That, like, the joke is they're fighting against KT. Even if they beat KT, none of these teams is top three. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter in that sense. So, and I quite feel like, yeah, I do think KT is a fundamentally better team. I don't care that they had that whack week against T1. Right. T1 can slap, clap a lot of teams right now. Like, they're better than D+. Plus. So if we're getting almost even odds, you've got to take the KT side of this one. Come on. It, it's, also, it's also that even if Pioshek is having a bad day, last week there were owner and Peanut to punish that, right? Do we believe that Lucid, who's had some really ropey early games and is a rookie, is going to be the guy to, like, bop Pioshek even if he's underperforming? That's where I really just get hung up. I mean, that's where I get hung up. And for um, me, the, the problem I have always found in evaluating Pioshik's form is there is no rhyme or reason to it. He really does just wake up and randomly have a really good so game. Bad. But it, it just doesn't make any... And then he might... By the way, he might be terrible the next game, but it just yep. happens out of nowhere. So, yeah, I don't, I've never even thought it was like pressure. It's just, it, it genuinely seems like you, it's like a roller dice type meme guy in these. So, yeah, you can do it. All right, we're doing it again. Surely KT will not burn us one more time. So we'll put a thousand at 1.8. I just really don't believe in DRX. Like outside of some showmaker games, yeah, they D just plus, really D plus or D plus. Yeah. Outside of some good showmaker games, no, they no, really haven't there. shown a lot of life. And like, given that we know that showmaker has already been demotivated in the past, how could this not be more demotivating for him at this point in time? No, I actually think it's sad because like I was saying, there's a world where like if KT and D plus were better, Quang Dong was on the way up. Like, mate, we'd have had like a really hot like playoffs. Like, it could be super contested. Whereas instead, like this league is mega stratified for me at the moment. It's mega stratified. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We wrap up with an LPL match. Weibo versus FPX. So FPX again, not quite as crazy odds versus NIP, but also probably a more winnable match, right? Weibo has thrown quite a bit. Uh, Weibo has not been necessarily as strong as you might believe if the last time you saw them was tearing up into the finals of the world championship. Obviously, the Shy isn't even on a team right now. Um, and it, I, I feel like it's a been a little bit hard to have faith in Weibo, whereas like, I really like the current form and kind of hotness of fun plus Phoenix. Oh, and ironically, this Weibo team is just so underwhelming across the board. Like, obviously, there's a bunch of names you won't know as well if you don't follow the LPL. There, there's not, there's not, this isn't like some super shrewdly put together roster and it's like got an interesting rebuild. It's actually just a, a down year, guys. This is a year where it's clear that like they didn't get the names they wanted. The offseason didn't work how they wanted. Look, they've still got some good names like Light and Crisp are both good players and always have been for years and years and years, but that isn't enough. Like, if you look at the team they're playing, like, I, I absolutely think this is a, a, a very good chance for FPX to get the upset. Yeah, and Zhao, who I think has had some some very good performances, but I mean they're coming off a loss to OMG. They they got they they should have had game two versus top esports, and they underperformed there. Um, they got beaten by LNG, who we now know is actually quite bad, and the rest of their schedule has been super soft. Um, you know, the 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 later half of the latter half of the season is where all of the hard games for Weibo are coming in. So I do also feel that they have been pumped up in their schedule and they're barely above 50 percent at four and three, whereas FBX is ahead of them in the standings, has has beaten, you know, frankly, better teams than Weibo has so far. And so I think this is this is like feeling pretty juicy with the current form of Weibo. Yes. I wish the odds were better, though. I will say that. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will just take the outright 500 for FPX to win the series versus Weibo. So a lot of belief in Weibo this week. Hopefully it won't FPX. come around to bite or FPX. Sorry, FPX this week. Hopefully it won't come around to bite us like the KT and uh, Kwangdong. But we've doubled down on Kwangdong and KT this week. They must return to some kind of form. Surely, surely. Yes. <laughs> and if not, of course, we're probably just going to keep doing that because the odds are too good on some favorites. Um, thanks, guys. 
for joining us for Competitive Edge. Remember to bet on our match of the week with $10 or more, and you'll have a chance of that raffle doubled to $40 USDT. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you next week.